I? I'm going to transfer schools. Iris's eyes widened at my words. Then, a sad expression appeared on her face. No, it can't be. Seeing her reaction, I decided to go for it. I ripped the second button off my uniform. It's a year early, but please take it. I held the second button tightly in my fist and extended it toward her. I looked straight at Iris. Iris brought her hand to her mouth and then shed tears. I'm sorry. I was completely shocked. My name is Harry. I'm 30 years old. Currently, I'm outside, having stepped out of my high school reunion for a moment. Our high school has an interesting tradition. When graduates turn 30, a reunion is held in the school gym. The current students prepare for it. It starts in the evening and goes on until night. Simple snacks are provided, but generally, each alumnus brings something. Alcohol is not allowed. I've been having a great time with my friends, reminiscing and enjoying ourselves. But the person I really want to see is still surrounded by people, and I haven't had a chance to talk to her yet. So nostalgic. Standing in front of the big cherry tree next to the gym, I reminisced about my high school days. In high school, I was an average student. I didn't study much for tests. Just by listening in class, I could score around 80. For me, not having high aspirations, it was a satisfactory score. One day, I had forgotten to bring a homework assignment that was due that day, so I went home to get it. Walking down the hallway to the staff room, I saw a girl looking worried. It was Iris. She was at the top of our class every year and was also very pretty. She was flawless. She was someone I thought I'd never have any connection with. No way, has Mr. Austin already left? She mentioned the math teacher's name with a troubled look. The teacher she asked offered to call another math teacher, but she shook her head and turned to leave, passing by me. A pleasant, floral scent wafted in the air. It was probably her shampoo or conditioner. Feeling a bit lucky, I went into the staff room, handed in my assignment, got a bit of a lecture, and then left. Walking down the hallway, I saw something on the floor. I picked it up and realized it was a student ID. It had Iris written on it. I checked the shoe lockers and saw her shoes were still there. This meant she was still in the school. I debated leaving the student ID in the shoe locker and going home. But it felt a bit wrong, so I headed toward the classroom. I was in class 1, she was in class 3. I decided to check the classrooms and the library, and if I didn't find her, I would leave the ID in the shoe locker. Peeking into class 3, I saw Iris with her head in her hands. I quietly entered the classroom and said, um. She looked up at me. Her eyes were shining with tears. Iris quickly wiped them away and looked at me. What? Pretending not to notice her tears, I walked over and placed the student ID on her desk. I found this. Oh, I dropped it. Thank you. Iris examined the student ID and thanked me. No problem, I'm glad you were still here. Just as I was about to leave, a paper on her desk caught my eye. Math? When I asked, Iris nodded. I just can't figure it out. The paper wasn't the usual school handout but a plain white sheet. It's not a school assignment, is it? Iris nodded. It's homework from my cram school. A quick glance revealed that the problems looked tough. Why don't you ask your cram school teacher if you don't understand? When I offered this sensible suggestion, her face clouded over. My dad checks it before I go. If I can't solve it, he gets mad. So that's what it's like to be the parent of the top student. I was impressed. So you were looking for Mr. Austin, the math teacher. Couldn't another teacher help? I asked out of genuine curiosity, and she looked down a bit. I'm scared of teachers I don't know. Indeed, we rarely interacted with teachers from other grades, and they did seem a bit intimidating. A silence fell between us. I thought about just leaving. But I couldn't ignore the worried look on her face. Can I take a look? Iris looked at me skeptically. Her expression seemed to say, there's no way you can solve it. But I was good at math. The problem involved inequalities and was a word problem. It was quite complex. Thinking it through in my head was tricky. Do you mind if I use the blackboard? I walked over to the blackboard and started writing equations with the chalk. Wait, 
this method won't work. Oh, I need to set up the equation from the conclusion? Muttering to myself. I solved it in about three minutes. Does this look right? Iris tilted her head. I don't know, there's no answer key. How did you solve it? Iris, still sitting at her desk, came over to the blackboard and stood next to me. The same pleasant scent from earlier made my heart race a little. Well, you see. I explained the equations on the blackboard, and her face lit up. Her smile made my teenage heart flutter. Wow. I get it. I think that's correct. Amazing. As I was admiring her smile, she took my hand. Thank you. Um. Harry. Thank you. You're really smart to solve a problem like this. She read my name embroidered on my chest pocket, thanked me, and complimented me. Then Iris looked at the clock. Oh no. It's already this late. I have to go, or I'll get in trouble. See you, Harry. Help me again if I need it. She said this quickly and hurried out of the classroom. I stood there, feeling the lingering warmth of her hand, unable to move for a while. Though my motivation was impure, I started studying hard from that day on. So that I could answer any question Iris might ask me. However, since she rarely had trouble, my efforts were mostly in vain, but my grades skyrocketed. Even so, I never reached the top of the class. I was not good at Japanese and social studies. In our second year, we ended up in the same class. We didn't talk much, but during the committee selection in April, I was nominated for vice chair. And Iris was nominated for chair. I accepted the nomination for vice chair, somewhat reluctantly, while Iris took the role of chair as if it were natural. She seemed to care about her report card. One day, when I was late because of the committee meeting, I decided to ask her something I had been wondering about. Hey, why do you always work so hard? She frowned. It's not a happy story. I nodded. Even if it wasn't happy, I wanted to know her reason. My parents are bureaucrats who graduated from Tokyo University. My eyes widened. That's amazing. Lacking vocabulary, that was all I could say. Isn't it? My older brother is also very smart. When I heard the name of the high school her brother attended, I was even more surprised. That's the top school in the prefecture. Iris nodded. I want to go to the same high school as my brother, then go to Tokyo University, and eventually marry someone who graduated from Tokyo University. Otherwise, I'll be abandoned. Despite being naturally bright, she worked hard every day. I understand aiming for Tokyo University, but planning to marry someone from there, isn't that a bit early to think about? I said, and she smiled wryly. Yeah, I guess. But I've been told that all my life, if I don't find someone from there, I can't get married. There was a hint of self-deprecation in her laugh. What about universities better than Tokyo University? I asked, and she furrowed her eyebrows. It's the best university in Japan, you know? I laughed at her words. True, but what about abroad? Like Harvard, Stanford, or Oxford? Iris's eyes widened at my words. I never thought about that. I smiled slightly. I don't think education is everything. If your perspective is narrow, your future choices will be limited too. Iris gave a faint smile. Yeah, but for now, my goal is Tokyo University. I want to become a bureaucrat and support the country from behind the scenes like my parents. I was amazed at her grand dream. Then maybe I'll go to Harvard and become a politician, eventually the prime minister, would that satisfy Iris's parents? Just kidding. Iris blushed slightly at my casual remark. Um, does that mean? Just as the atmosphere was getting a bit romantic. Hey. It's time to go home. A teacher who had spotted us called out from a distance. We quickly responded, and my moment of courage was left unresolved as we headed home. From then on, we remained more than friends but less than lovers. Or so I thought. At least, that was my perception at the time. In the second term, we continued as chair and vice chair, occasionally studying together after school. While I mostly hung out with boys and Iris with girls, the girl I talked to the most was Iris. And I believe I was the boy she talked to the most as well. 
On days with committee meetings, we would leave school together, walk out the gate, and part ways at the first intersection. From there, we headed in different directions. If only we were closer to each other's homes. There were times when I thought that. One day, as we were about to head home together, Iris glanced at the cherry tree next to the gym. Hey, did you know? There's a legend that couples who exchange the ribbon of a girl's school uniform and the second button of a boy's under this cherry tree on graduation day will get married. Not being familiar with such superstitions, I was genuinely intrigued. Wow, marriage, huh? So this cherry tree must be really popular on graduation day. At our middle school graduation ceremony, the second year students attended as current students, but the first year students stayed home. I thought I would check out the cherry tree after the graduation ceremony, but Iris shook her head. Actually, today's students are too shy to do that publicly. It's kind of sad. She glanced at me. If someone did something that romantic, even if I didn't like him, I'd probably say yes. My heart skipped a beat. Could this mean I should get my hopes up? Is she subtly telling me to invite her under the cherry tree on graduation day? If so, I needed to study even harder to get into Harvard. After all, her parents wouldn't approve of anyone less than a Tokyo University graduate. To make a promise under the cherry tree on graduation day, I had to get into Harvard. Motivated by this impure intention, I threw myself into my studies even more. However, those days came to an abrupt end. My father was transferred. It was a transfer to a city far away from my hometown. I found out at the end of my second year, on the first day of March. I realized I would no longer see Iris. When my father told me about the transfer, my vision went dark for a moment. But. I'm going to confess. I made up my mind. On the day of the third year graduation ceremony. After the ceremony, we, the second year students, clean up the gym. Then. I would walk home with her and give her the second button. I nervously prepared for the graduation ceremony, spent the ceremony feeling anxious. Finally, after the ceremony, during the cleanup, I lied, could you help me with some studying afterward, to stay a bit longer at school? Once all the students were gone, we left. Passing by the cherry tree, I suddenly stopped. Iris, who was walking ahead, turned around. What's wrong? My heart was racing. I'm, transferring. Iris's eyes widened at my words. Then, her expression turned sad. No, it can't be. Seeing her reaction, I decided to go for it. I ripped the second button off my uniform. It's a year early, but, please take this. I held the second button tightly in my fist and extended it toward her. I looked straight at Iris. Iris brought her hand to her mouth, and tears started to flow. I'm sorry. I was completely shocked. Hadn't she implied that if I confessed, she might say yes even if she didn't like me? Was it because it wasn't the actual graduation day? My thoughts were spinning, but I managed to speak. Oh. I see. I'm sorry. Iris, seeing my distress, looked troubled. I'm sorry, but… She seemed to be searching for a reason to reject me. Part of me wanted to know, but part of me didn't. For her sake, I should let go. I knew that. But even though I had been rejected, I wanted to stay with her a bit longer. Iris glanced at the gym. Did you know that every year, the graduates from here have a reunion when they turn 30? The conversation took a strange turn, and I was puzzled. Ha! Huh? Oh, yeah, I know, we have to help with the preparations, so, what about it? I looked at Iris, but she kept her gaze on the gym. When we're 30, if we're both still single. She paused and then looked directly at me. Let's exchange then. She gave me a big smile. I'm definitely going to Tokyo University, so. Harry, you go to Harvard. Promise. This promise made me feel like we had formed a bond. Got it. Iris. I'll make it happen. We walked home. It was a bit awkward, but I spent the remaining days before my transfer just like normal with Iris. They are very precious memories. And now, here I am at 30, standing under the cherry tree. As I reminisced, I heard the sound of heels approaching. Turning around, I saw Iris walking toward me in a blue dress. Iris. The wind gently rustled her dress. 
I finally managed to get away. She gave a slight smile. You achieved your dream. You went to Tokyo University, became a bureaucrat, and even became Miss Tokyo University? Congratulations. I said this with a gentle smile, and Iris responded with a soft laugh. Thank you. It's been hectic, but I'm doing well. How about you? I haven't heard a thing about you. I even asked everyone about Harry. But no one knew anything. I looked down a bit. I've been keeping my background hidden. Iris tilted her head. Why? I hesitated a bit but answered honestly. When I say I'm from Harvard, people's reactions change and it makes me uncomfortable. Iris's eyes widened. So, you really went to Harvard? I slowly nodded. Yes, I had also fulfilled my middle school dream. After intense studying, I got into the top high school in the area, and during high school, I actively participated in events that allowed me to communicate with people from abroad. My three years of hard work paid off, and I was awarded a scholarship to Harvard University. College life was stimulating. Everything I saw and heard was full of energy. Having achieved my goal of getting into Harvard, I went through a period of feeling aimless. As I attended university, more and more things I wanted to do kept coming to mind. Among these thoughts, Iris was always on my mind. Iris, who wanted to become a bureaucrat and work for the country. What could I do for my country? I had thought about becoming a politician back in middle school. But I realized it wasn't for me. One person's power alone isn't enough. What could be the pillars supporting the country? As I pondered this, an idea came to me. I graduated from Harvard and returned to Japan. Now, I work as a business consultant during the day and run a nonprofit organization that provides free tutoring to children at night. Iris's eyes widened at my words. The foundation of a country's support is its tax revenue, right? For that revenue to increase, businesses need to earn more. That's why I work as a consultant. And at night, I run a tutoring center for children who can't afford to study properly. These kids will shape the future of Japan. Iris gave a small applause. That's amazing, truly wonderful. Her words made me blush. Then, I pulled something out of my pocket. I haven't asked if you're seeing someone. I can't imagine a Miss Tokyo University being single. But today, I want you to take this. I extended my fist toward Iris. She held out her right hand beneath my fist. Out of my fist fell the second button from my middle school uniform. The button she once refused to accept. After that failed confession, I couldn't bring myself to put it back on my uniform, so I kept it with care all these years. I remembered how I had attached a spare button in place of the second one so my parents wouldn't notice. Thank you. I'm happy. Maybe she didn't have a boyfriend. Maybe we could finally become a couple. Filled with hope, I saw Iris smirk. But my ribbon. I won't give it to you that easily. Her unexpected response made me brace myself. If you can answer four of my questions correctly, I'll give it to you. The unexpected twist left me bewildered. First question. Leaving me stunned, Iris posed her first question. What do you think of the current politics in Japan? I was taken aback. Does that even have a right answer? At my question, Iris tilted her head and smiled. She didn't seem interested in answering. I shared my opinion with her. Iris smiled, seemingly satisfied. Okay, second question. What's the solution to global warming? Another tough question. It was a huge challenge. Thinking hard and recalling what I learned in university, I managed to come up with an answer. Iris nodded along. It was hard to tell if I was right or wrong. All right, third question. Once again, it was a question with no clear right answer. And then. Okay, the fourth question. Iris looked up at me. How many guys have I dated so far? The sudden change in direction of the question threw me off. Uh. Um, well. I hoped the answer was zero. But that was unlikely. She was Miss Tokyo University, after all. She was pretty, with excellent communication skills. One. I'd be jealous of that guy. If it were more, 
I wouldn't like that either. You have 10 seconds left. The sudden time limit made me panic. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, three. Iris made a dramatic frown. Ron. Now you're out of chances. Here's the final question. She didn't tell me the correct answer. While I was bewildered, Iris took a step closer to me. Do I still love you? Her question made my heart race. What did she mean by still? Had she ever liked me before? I had confessed before transferring, but she rejected me. However, she left the possibility open for when we turned 30. I gathered my courage. Yes. I stammered a bit but looked straight at Iris and answered. Iris stared at me without changing her expression. Final answer? With a mischievous look, she dragged out the moment. What was the answer? My heart was pounding loudly. I wanted the answer quickly. As I swallowed nervously, Iris broke into a smile. Then, she extended her left hand to me. In her palm was, her ribbon. I guess I'm actually quite loyal and innocent. The answer to the fourth question is, zero. Hearing her answer, I couldn't hold back any longer. I wrapped my arms around Iris. She also put her arms around my back. I'm sorry I couldn't respond back in middle school. I thought a long-distance relationship would be impossible for me. I was overwhelmed with studying, and even then, it was hard to focus while harboring my first crush. Hearing first crush, my heart skipped a beat. Your first crush, was me? In my arms, Iris nodded. Kind, hardworking, and we got along so well. You were the only boy who casually said. Then I'll aim for Harvard when I hinted that I wouldn't date anyone less than a Tokyo University graduate. My heart raced. But, as Miss Tokyo University, didn't you have a lot of suitors? Wasn't there anyone good at Tokyo University? I asked, and Iris laughed. Of course, there were many. But I couldn't forget you, who aimed for Harvard for me. What about you? Didn't girls flock to you once they knew you were from Harvard? Those blonde beauties there? I chuckled at her question. There were girls, even if I wasn't noticed by blonde beauties, when I returned home and people knew I was from Harvard. Both men and women treated me differently. But like I said, I hated that, so I usually kept it hidden. I only mentioned it when necessary for work. I took a deep breath. Until I turned 30 and reunited with you, I made sure I didn't develop feelings for anyone else. Iris giggled. So, what if I rejected you? I laughed. Then I'd flaunt my Harvard background and have a blast. Iris laughed heartily at my joke. Then you'll never get to play around. Is that okay? I tightened my arms around her. Of course. You're the only woman I want to be with forever. We hugged in silence for a while. Then, congratulations, someone shouted, causing the surrounding crowd to cheer. Turning around, I saw a large group of people gathered at the gym entrance. It seemed we had been watched. Since when, I wondered. Well, of course, if Miss Tokyo University doesn't come back for a while, everyone would be worried and look outside. It was obvious, but we hadn't noticed and spent the time as if we were alone. I felt embarrassed my face burning. Suddenly, there was a chant for a kiss. Was it okay to do this? In front of everyone. Under the sacred cherry tree of our middle school. I tried to avoid it, but Iris whispered. If you don't, we won't be able to calm them down. Iris looked down shyly, and I found her irresistibly cute. So, in front of everyone, under the sacred cherry tree of our middle school, I gave Iris a light kiss. Years have passed since then. Iris and I got married. A year later, we were blessed with a child, expanding our family. Three years later, we had another child, making us a family of four now. I've expanded my NPO tutoring program nationwide and also offer it online while continuing in-person sessions. Many children from low-income families seek a place where they belong. I hope to provide that place for them. Iris is busy every day as a bureaucrat. Iris often comes home late at night so I worry about her health. I try my best to cook a warm dinner for her, filled with love so that she can eat when she gets home. Iris takes care of breakfast. The breakfast she makes is my best source of energy for the day. Sometimes, as I look at our sleeping children, I wonder. 
What kind of adults will they become? Their father went to Harvard, and their mother went to Tokyo University. I hope they don't feel any undue pressure because of that. After all, their future is wide open. I want them to become whatever they want to be without narrowing their choices. And once they decide what they want to become, I want to support them with all my might as a parent. The same goes for the children who come to our tutoring program. If they find a dream, I want to help them achieve it with all my might. As I thought about these things while watching my children sleep, I heard a faint sound from the entrance. Iris had come home quietly so as not to wake the children. I quietly left the children's room and headed to the kitchen to warm up dinner for Iris.